Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichek. I want to talk about our understanding about why uh, SIBO or bacterial overgrowth will relapse after you've tried treating it. All right. Um, so here again, just quick review. Uh, stomach flows in the small intestine into the large intestine. We generally have these species of bacteria live in the small intestine. Uh, these critters live down here in the large intestine. Very few bacteria up here. I mean, literally almost sterile under normal conditions. And for every one here, you'll have 100 million bacteria down here. So you go from almost sterile to uh, 4 trillion bacteria. Okay, normal. Now, what is happening in the population at large is more and more people uh, for a, a variety of reasons and uh, are developing overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine. So you have uh, bacteria, these are normal bacteria just in the wrong place, all right? And when you have overgrowth, typically one, maybe two species are up there. Now, and, and one, we don't know why this is happening a lot in people. We don't believe this was happening in the 60s and 70s, all right? And, but point is, so this is first described in the late 1960s by Dr. Sidney Feingold, and it had to do with some patients who had ruined Y surgeries and some other things like that. And uh, then there's more and more progressive research on this. It was discovered if you have bacterial overgrowth, this contributes to a condition called hepatic encephalopathy, where basically, in layman's terms, your liver's really sick, uh, like you might need a transplant, and if you get overgrowth, you might die. Okay, so there's been a lot of work on this, trying to understand this, especially in this little niche of very, very sick patients. So it's not really a new thing. It's just now being understood to be happening in a lot of other people. Now, inulin is a prebiotic, which helps to basically the natural bird bacteria that live up here will eat inulin and they create these uh, very healthy acids they acidify the small intestine, and the, the guys down here don't like acid. And so you'll get an effect like this with inulin, okay? Kind of the, these bacteria will migrate away uh, from the acid, just like cold water fish don't like warm currents, and they migrate away. The other thing that we use that's uh, more effective in adults generally is uh, the antibiotic rifaximin which has been used for these liver patients for a couple decades now. So we have a lot of experience with rifaximin for this. And the only thing rifaximin can do, all right, is fix this. It's the only thing you can do. Rifaximin can only kill the fish bacteria. It doesn't harm the birds. It only kills the fish bacteria, but it only works in the small intestine. When that drug comes down all the way down here, it crystallizes and it won't work. So, using rifaximin, we'll use this as a case. Uh, you're taking it for twice a day for 10 days, or say you're taking it for a month, uh, you know, twice a day for a month, whatever, and you stop. The question is, how long do you stay like this? Now, most people will feel it when it returns. When you start the rifaximin, you have to take notes of like, wow, what got better here in the first week or two? It could be I'm less lightheaded, I got fewer headaches, or it could be certain foods don't bother me anymore, or uh, in me, you know, I get inflammation in my shoulder, uh, and coffee makes me nauseated, that'll go away. And the point is really, most patients won't stay like this forever after you treat it, okay? This isn't like eradicating bacteria for a pneumonia where it would never come back. This is controlling this environment and patients will relapse. And uh, the primary thing that makes you relapse is if you think of your intestinal tract as a conveyor belt and each segment kind of pushing stuff down the line, all right? It's due to the slow motility of the small intestine and then the the functionality, there's a little valve here called the ileocecal valve. And these are, are under control of uh, the top autonomic nervous system as well as the enteric nervous system. So enteric means intestines. You have a separate nervous system here 
that has about 500 million neurons in it. So it's almost like its own little brain there. When this system, either in the autonomics or the enteric system, are injured, this conveyor belt slows down. And the slower it goes, the more likely, once you stop your rifaximin, you're going to relapse. And so you'll have some patients and you give them rifaximin and they do well for uh, you know a few months and then they start feeling whatever their symptoms kind of coming back. They only need to take rifaximin for 10 more days. They take it twice a day for 10 days, boom, and now they'll go for several more months. And typically as they keep doing this, when they're also doing the fish oil, the olive oil, and the vagal stimulator, that continues to heal, the motility continues to improve, and now instead of, say, relapses every two to three months, it's now every five to six months, and pretty soon they don't really spontaneously relapse at all. And I'm at the point where I really don't just relapse. Um, I have to have a kind of a neurological trauma for that to happen. Now, the trauma is, it sounds kind of dramatic. It's not like I get a concussion all the time, uh, but it could be an inflammatory surge, which COVID can do. And anytime your nervous system is kind of injured, what happens is the gut slows down for a moment. And that can be enough to trigger, boom, overgrowth. Okay? And, uh, but for me, and really many of the patients I deal with, it's often emotional stuff. You know, um, a good friend passes, the dog passes away, things like that. And that happens to everybody. And those things will also cause a little kind of stress or minor injury to the nervous system. And then boom, you relapse. Okay? So, I'm at the point I only need 10 days of uh, Rifaximin twice a day and I'm good to go again for many, many months until something else happens. All right? So that's the general way it happens. Now, if you're on Rifaximin, and I've seen this with COVID patients where they're pretty beat up, um, and we've got them like this and they're doing pretty good, and you're four months out and you stop, and within a week or two, they relapse already. Okay? I don't just do 10 days, 10 days, 10 days. If it's within... If you're relapsing within a month or six weeks, I generally put you back on continuous for maybe another four month stretch. I want patients when we stop the Zyfaxin to go for at least a few months, three, four, okay? And and also when you stop, you can just boom, go cold turkey. You don't have to like taper down or anything like that. You don't have to do that. So I hope that's, and eventually when you do enough continuous, the gut heals enough, and I, when I'm saying that, I also mean you're also fish oil, olive oil, and the vagal stimulator. When uh, you control this long enough, this will heal, and you won't have those rapid relapses. All right? Okay. Everybody have a great day. I hope that's uh, useful. Take care. Bye.